Hey everybody, welcome back to Fish Den 365. I'm Den Herring, and welcome back to Top Water Tuesday. You know, it's been 10 months since we started the Top Water Tuesday series, and I think it's about time we talk about this bait. That, huh? Okay, so what do I have in my hands here? This is the Rapala floating minnow. Now, depending on what part of the country you're from, some people call this or is known as a Rapala, but I believe the actual correct pronunciation of the name is Rapala. And this lure was developed in 1936 by a gentleman by the name of Laurie Rapala. He's credited with being the world's first inventor having the world's first floating minnow lure. And he did it out of necessity. If you ever want to read an interesting story, get online sometime and read the story of Laurie Rapala and the entire Rapala uh, line of lures and how they came to be. Very interesting story. He came up in tough times during the, the Great Depression. And, you know, he was a strong dude and his wife was a strong woman as well. They ended up having, I believe, six children, four boys and two girls. Very interesting story. Anyway, Let's talk more about this lure. So the first one was built, like we said, in 1936, and he used chocolate candy wrappers and some other, uh, some other, I forget what else it was. Uh, I'll put it in the, uh, well, actually, I'll put it up here. Uh, it was something that uh, took the place of what, we, what today would be epoxy, but they didn't have anything like that back then. So he used these chocolate candy wrappers as foil, and then he, he used some kind of liqueur or something to... Uh, to make a, a, a protective layer over the bait. Like I said, I'll put it up here so that you can see it. But uh, again, a really interesting story. And this bait, I've been using this for many years. It was one of the first baits that I was introduced to as a kid because it's just, you know, it's like the gold standard when it comes to minnow baits. And they, they come in a number of different sizes and colors. This is a size I use quite a bit. They come in a really large size here, a seven inch size as well. They're all made of wood. There's no rattles or anything in them. They're made of uh, balsa. When he first did the uh, his first lure, he made it out of cork. But uh, I believe they use balsa wood. Here's some different color and different size baits, just so you can get an idea. They have uh, multiple good paint patterns and uh, multiple sizes for this for this bait, depending on the fish you're trying to catch. Uh, the problem, the one I use the most is, is probably this one. It's about five inches long, I suppose, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a really good bait. One thing that, that uh, always kind of uh, confused me about the Rapala is that it has a much deader action than, say, oh, let's see, where are my lures here? It's not as buoyant as two of the lures that we've done in previous shows, the AC Shiner and the Bagley Bangalore. These, these are uh, lighter lures and, and more buoyant and more lively in the water when you work them. This one is a more, uh, has a more deadening type of action to it. It has a, a subtle wobble. In fact, when he first made the lure, he didn't know what to call it. For many years, they were selling this bait and they just called it a wobbler because it has a, just this subtle wobble to it. It doesn't have a lot of high buoyancy. It doesn't bounce around and move around a lot when you when you twitch your rod tip. But there's something special about this bait. And, and Laurie, in the story that I read, he would notice how pike and trout would chase these minnows. And that he, he observed, because he was actually a commercial fisherman back then, and he would observe the fish in the water in some of these lakes in Finland where he was from. And he'd see that, that you'd have a group of bait fish and Invariably, the, the predator fish would always go after the, the bait fish that was injured or, or something was quite was something wrong with it, like it was sick or not quite right. Those are the ones that uh, these that the predator fish would go in and uh, z zero in on and, and, and eat. And so he tried to make a lure that imitated like that injured swim that he noticed a lot on a lot of these bait fish through this little subtle wobble. And I have to say, even though it doesn't have the kind of action as of these other two lures that I mentioned that we did previous videos about, this dang thing is one heck of a fish catcher. I've caught so many fish on this lure over the years, especially in the Pocono waters, in those uh, Pocono lakes that have the tannic waters and shallow water. There's always good opportunity for top water when the water's warm there. And I can remember a time 
<laughs> this was a long time ago, back in the 1980s, when I was fishing on Mincy Lake. This was uh, Lake Mincy in, in, uh, in Northampton County. It was a Sunday, and I remember it just like it was yesterday. I had a rubber raft back then, and I was fishing out of a, a rubber raft. It had a couple of chambers in it, and I'd go out on the lake, and I'd just fish out there. Well, on this particular Sunday, there were just boats everywhere. There were people fishing in these boats. There were people just enjoying the nice Sunday weather. It was just, it was a nice summer day. And, but there were, I mean, the lake was crowded. Uh, you know, I could cast and reach other boats with a long cast. That's how many boats were on. It was just crazy crowded. And, and I couldn't catch a fish. And I had a Rapala on. I had one of these Rapala uh, floating minnows on. And I threw it out there and I got a backlash. And it was a dead still day. There was no wind. The water was dead still. And I got this backlash, and that lure was sitting out there, and I was pulling the backlash out, and pulling the backlash out, and I mean, minutes went by. And uh, I finally got the backlash out. I look up, and all of a sudden, I just see my lure get sucked underwater. I caught a nice 18-inch bass, and I thought, you know, it, it, it was weird. I, I had that feeling that, the, the, you know, it wasn't by accident. That thing was looking at that for a long time. And something in my mind just told me, well, throw that lure out there and just let it sit again. In fact, I, I put my rod down. I was forcing myself to let it sit. I caught eight bass that afternoon, and none of them were smaller than 15 inches. And the people around me in the other boats were astounded. They were asking, what the heck are you doing? How are you catching those fish? And the secret was, on that particular day, you had to throw this thing out there, let the ripples subside, and just let it sit out there. And it wasn't doing anything. It, it had to look like a stick. It, it, uh, it was crazy dead flat water, just sitting there. They would just come up and they would just slowly suck it in. And it was the pattern for that day. And I'll never forget that day because I learned that that was something that I learned to, to, uh, to do again in years, as the years went on. Sometimes that pattern would, would happen again. Not often, but when it happens, it's the only thing that works. It's crazy. You, it's just amazing how I was able to catch those fish and all these other guys out there were just bombing and it was just no good. So it, I'll never forget the Rapala floating minnow because that's what I was using on that day. And so there's a number. So that's one way you could fish this lure, right? Just dead stick it on the surface. And there are certain days where that'll work. And I would imagine there are days when you have a slight ripple on the water and this thing's on the surface. And, and that could actually make the bait look a little more lively. And I'm sure that would work as well. And that's another key for fishing this lure. You throw it out there and you let the ripple subside. And then you just twitch it a few times on the surface. It makes it look like an injured minnow. You catch fish that way. Another way is just to slowly reel it in, like a, like a wake bait, making it just wobble on the surface or just subsurface. And so that's another really good way. I've caught many, many fish just waking this thing in. I, re I remember having a day on the lower, the lower lake at Promised Land. It was a really good day where that's all I was doing was just, just and it was this color too. It was a perch colored one. And man, they were, just, they were just annihilating it. The bass were just eating it that day. So I have, I have some good memories with this lure, and I probably should use it more. I've gotten away from it over the years, and, and so I need to get back into throwing this when the conditions are right because it could be dynamite when the conditions are right. It also catches other fish species, northern pike, chain pickle. They like it too. So, But it is a good bass lure as well. And then, you know, another way to fish this is subsurface. You can fish this like a jerk bait where you have it uh, under the water and you're twitching your rod and just making this thing dart and dance under the water. Of course, you could always stop that and let it float back up to the surface. Looks like it's sick or injured. Sometimes that's when the fish will hit it. That way you still have the top water bite going on. But you can catch them on subsurface with this lure as well. But it is a floating bait and, and you can keep it on the surface easy enough. And, and you know, truth be told, most of the fish I've caught on this bait were off the surface over the years. Yeah, I don't know what kind of hooks come with it, but I always switch them out for these EWGs. This one has three hooks, this size lure, so I use a, a number six EWG hook so that they're not tangling in, e in each other and you know, the Gamagatsu uh, trebles. You know, obviously on a bait like this you would need bigger hooks because this is quite a bit of a bigger bait. I do remember a day with this lure too. I, I threw this out one time at, at Shahola, uh, Shahola Lake and I had a huge bass just take it under and, and I was fighting this bass for a while and it just came free. It came off but I sure would like to see that fish because I think it was an eight pounder or more. It was a, it was a large fish. And this was, again, back in the 80s when that lake was producing some really big specimens of bass. And I don't know how many of you fished Shahola back then, but I was fishing it back in the 70s. I have a few friends who fished it back then, and they could tell you 
those fish were genetic freaks. They were they were like built like basketballs. They were they were huge stomachs on them. The, the bass. It was just an amazing fishery back then. So a lot of good memories for uh, fishing the Rapala floating minnow. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video and, and got something out of it. If you did, please give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that like button. You can also hit that bell. That'll give you a notification for when my next video is coming out. You know, uh, it's getting cold now. It's October 4th today. And, you know, we've had this hurricane affecting our weather. You know, we're getting temperatures in the 40s at night. And it's been pretty cold in the day and not much sunlight. Top water time is running out. You can still catch them on top water. And I plan to. And I hope to do a video or two on top water yet. But the, the, that window is closing now because the, the lakes will be cooling down. And, you know, when you, once you get into the November time frame or mid-November, uh, you can still get them under the right conditions on top. But it gets tougher and tougher. This is a great time of year to fish though. Being the fall, there's less people on the water. There's less pleasure boaters on the water. So you get a, you get a little more of the lake to yourself. It's a great time to be out there fishing. I hope to see you out there. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.